It's been two weeks since the XZ concert and my conversation with Uncle Kaito. In that time, my team is still undefeated and stronger than ever. Kaori, Sho, Mayu, and I put in extra hours of practice as we prepare ourselves for the for more difficult opponents. Things have been going amazingly well with Kaori and I. Ever since I showed up in, unannounced in her room, Kaori has been non-stop sending me help, help tips and recipes, fuck. I can't tell if she's trying to t hint at something or if she's just sharing another interest with me. Either way, I use it to my advantage and get delicious Kaori made bentos whenever I ask for samples of her recipe. I'm sure she's caught up on that. That eh, I'm sure she caught on that I just want to eat her cooking, but she doesn't seem to mind. Nikki is up to her usual tricks in the kitchen. When they're short staff at the cafe, Nikki finally had her chance to show off her skills at cooking. She impressed the chef so much that she no longer has to spend her time washing dishes. Of course, with greater responsibilities come longer hours at work. Uncle Kaito has been working harder than ever. This last week in particular, he's been leaving the house earlier in the morning and coming home way past midnight. I have a feeling that's not just work that's keeping him busy. Maybe he started to rekindle his relationship with a certain favorite aunt. Well, hello, hello. My name is Gant and welcome back to Ace Academy. You know, the filler episodes where we're going down the county route. So, let us continue. It's Halloween and I'm gonna have to get there, so let's get going. After hanging up, I throw my phone down on my bed and try to make myself look presentable. I still have my old costume from the time back at CNNY. Any of them would be doable this time around. What do I want to dress up as? Mm, this one, because Cowdy loves Ninja Ranger. One of the Ninja Rangers! Time to cosplay my favorite anime. I pull out my Balance, the Ranger of Justice outfit. Balance might not have been my favorite Ranger, but he definitely has the coolest outfit out of the, all of them. After prepping and changing in my costume, I hop on my bike and head to campus. When I reach the pilot's lounge, main entrance, I text Sho, only to see him waving at me. Broseph! Hey. He's in a Yoshogami High School uniform. Persona 4? He grins. That's right! I never noticed until now, but the real show looks and acts very similar to Yusuke, Yosuke Hanamura. That's a perfect Yosuke cosplay, man. His eyes widen in surprise. Yosuke? Yeah. He frowns. No, not Yosuke! I'm supposed to be you, not Akami! Mmm, I don't see it. You definitely fit the profile on a secondary character. The protagonist's best friend, who's also stupid. No way! I won't settle for that role! I'm afraid it's already been decided. Because you look exactly like Yosuke in that cosplay. He looks like he's about to argue, but then sighs. <sighs> I knew I should have gotten that white wig sooner. It was still being delivered. You should have got Amazon Prime. At least he accepts his fate. Speaking of outfits... He looks at me. Balance from Ninja Rangers! Hell yeah. Yep, you know your anime. I watched it a ton as a kid. <sighs> you still watch it now. He scratches the back of his head and smiles. <laughs> yeah. Two guys dressed as salt and pepper shakers entered the building. Shall we get going? Where are the girls? They met up in Kauri's dorm to get ready. They'll be over soon. We can head in first. Alrighty. We entered the pilot's lounge, and I gape at the surroundings. There are fake cobweb lining the corners of the ceilings and walls. A fake bat and spire are strategically placed in nooks and crannies. The lights are dim, which gives the place a spookier feel. I barely even recognize the lounge. This place looks awesome. There's a decent number of people here, and I recognize most of the pilots. I assume there are also engineers and team managers here too. It's a little hard to tell who everyone is while they're in costume. 
and there are some pretty great costumes here. Some people went full out creative and dressed up as hilarious memes or puns, while others strolled out for fancy, well-crafted costumes. But of course, but of course, the winner of the evenings are all the beautiful ladies who can only technically be considered dressed. I sigh contently. This takes me back to my first C-I-N-Y costume party. I... I think I'm in heaven. <laughs> Fucking Show. Show's eyes are wide and his mouth hangs a gap. He stares hard at a group of girls dressed in a range of costumes from sexy teacher to cute Japanese idol cosplays. Whoa, there they are! Sho points to a group of girls standing near the couches. As I squint to get a better look, I realize it's the rest of our team. Looks like they made it here before us! Come on! Sho and I weave through the crowd and make our way to the girls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey! Sho's demeanor changes mid-word from excitement excited to confused. Hey there, cuties. Hello! Oh. Fucking Yuna. Hello! Oh, <laughs> oh Caddy's not gonna say nothing. Hi! Mayu smiles and waves. Joe's face is bright red, and he's having trouble making eye contact. I don't blame him. Cowdy is wearing a night outfit from a currently popular fantasy anime, and in typical anime fashion, the armor is more aesthetically pleasing than functional. As a healthy heterosexual male, Yuno's witch costume makes it hard to focus on her face. Maya is dressed in a cute magical girl cosplay. I'm impressed by the intricacies of her costume and how well it complements her. Finally, Valerie. I think the plethora of guys oogling her speaks volume about her Neko girl outfit. Valerie spins her tail playfully. So, what do you boys think? What a time to be alive! Valerie giggles. Let's go get some drinks? We all nod and head over to the bar. Caddy grabs my arm before I can join the rest of the group. Hey you! Hey! Oh fuck, hi. Her eyes sparkle as a smile graces her lips. You dressed up as balance! Hell yeah. Yep. I thought you might like it. She nods. It suits you. Caddy self-consciously places a hand on her bare hip and looks away. So, um, what do you think of this outfit? Well, you're fucking adorable. It's pretty cute, you know? Oh, shit, it's the first one. Cute. Oh my god, cute! <laughs> I smile warmly. You look amazing. Really? You think it looks good? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you can make anything look good. Cowdy's face is as red as her hair, and she smiles. Th thank you. Let's go meet up with the rest of the team. Alright. Once we all reconvene at the bar, we order our drinks and find an open table amongst the couches. Am I done with my white claw? It's so unfair that I still can't have anything alcoholic. Valerie pouts and puts an arm around Mayu. Isn't that right? Mayu speaks softly. Um, I don't want to drink even if I could. Well, that's a lie. Because I'm 21 and I can drink whenever I want. And it is amazing. Uh, but I fucked up, man. I bought White Claw. I thought it was beer, but, um, it's like, it's seltzer water. It's, it's like, um, that stupid, like, LaCroix, but, like, with alcohol. And it was, eh, you know what I mean? Alrighty, let's continue. I, I don't want to ramble too much today. Really? You have to at least try it once. I feel Sho's elbow my side. If she's this excitable normally, I wonder how she'd act when drunk. Well, let's be friends. Let's give her alcohol. The fuck? I remember before I was 21, my friends gave me alcohol in um some restaurant. Like, when the waiters are not looking, they just handed me the alcohol. It's like dope, man. I don't even want to imagine the trouble she'll get us all- I don't want to imagine the trouble she'll get all of us into. 
Show laughs. True that, Brosif. Hey, enough with your private conversation. Let's play a game. You know, perks up. Oh, that sounds like fun. Mayu nods excitedly. Even Kari seems interested. Okay, what game were you thinking, Valerie? Well, in honor of Sho's cosplay of Yosuke. Not Yosuke! Mayu looks surprised. Really? I thought you were Yosuke this whole time. Sho slumps on the table. Not you too, Mayu! I I'm sorry. It's just you portray him perfectly. And you got the hair, kind of. W with that outfit, I mean. Wasn't Yosuke the comic relief? Mm-hmm. And a pervert. Mm-hmm. It's like someone copy and pasted that character and changed the name to Sho. The group nods. Sho groans. Uh, you guys are killing me here. Yuna looks at Valerie. What game were you thinking about? The King's Game. The King's Game? Mm-hmm. It's easy. We number chopsticks and give one of them a special symbol. Whoever picks the symbol is the king. Oh, that sounds easy enough. What can the king do? The better question is what the king can't do. He'll command one of the numbers to do something, and his order is absolute. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I took a dark path in my mind. Because <laughs> of Cowdy's story, it's like, the king's orders are absolute. Number whatever, kill a man. That man over there, kill him. Do it. And they're like, I don't want to kill a man. Everyone's like, the king's orders are absolute. <laughs> you take that to court. Like, your your honor, I had to kill him. The king's orders are absolute. <laughs> don't worry, it's a lot of fun. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt to try it. Everyone looks at Cowdy in surprise. She's the last person we expect to agree to a game like this. She blinks at us. What? It's only us playing. I'm sure no one is going to make an unreasonable command. Cowdy glares at Sho. Right? Sho shifts uncomfortably. Right! Then it's settled! Valerie grabs some chopsticks and marked numbers with them. And then marked one of them with a color. She shuffles them around on the table, then holds them in her hands so the marks are covered. Let the games begin. My heart races in anticipation as we all grab a stick. I turn mines over and see colored markings. Luckily, I watch as the rest of my friends turn theirs over. Cowdy wears her best poker face. I didn't really... Eh, if I didn't already have the king stick, I wouldn't know what she, she had in her hand. Sho's face is one of bitter disappointment. I wonder what he had planned as king. Mayu breathes a sigh of relief. I guess he didn't want to be king. Valerie seems indifferent about her stick. She probably would be happier as either king or subject. Yuna looks around the table. Who's the king? I offer my glorious crown. Uh, chopstick. Brosif's got it. What is your command, your majesty? Let me think for a moment. I command number one to give me a kiss. Un, bes un beso. Number one to give me a kiss on the lips. Everyone quickly checks their numbers. Some of them sigh in relief while others wait in anticipation. Woo! It's not me. Thank God for that. That would have been weird. Who is it then? Oh, it's Cowdy. I see your fucking face. Cowdy stands so quickly her chair wobbles. Her face is bright red. I want to redraw! Nope. The king's orders are absolute! The king's orders are absolute, Cowdy. Okay, we have to do this. Because I choose number one to give me un beso. The rest of the group murmurs their agreement with Valerie. I guess no one wants to take Cowdy's place. What? Come on! What's the big deal? Aren't you two dating? Yeah, Cowdy, we're dating now. This is not weird. Or is it? Cowdy blush deepens. No, like, how long have we been dating? Like, you know what I mean? Let's kiss. Sh shut up! Mayu sighs. 
I'm disappointed by you, Cowdy. <laughs> huh? Mayu looks down. I always looked up to you and knew I could trust you because you always keep your word. Uh, uh, what the fuck? But, but now I... I think I hear faint sniffles. Ugh. Fine. Mayu looks up with dry eyes and a smile on her face as if nothing happened. I fucking hate that. My little sister, um, the youngest one, could do that so perfectly. It freaks me the fuck out, man. Ugh. Like, if she wants me to do anything, all she has to do is a fucking... <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Ah, fuck. I made her cry. She's gonna go tell mom. <laughs> uh, fuck, man. She's de devious. Luckily, Cowdy was too focused on me to notice Mayu. But, judging by everyone else's expression, they are all just as surprised by her performance as I am. Cowdy marches up to me. Why, hello there. Shut up! Don't make this worse than it is! She sits down next to me and places both of her hands on a space between us. Oh, eh, fuck. She sits down next to me and places both of her hands on the space between us on the chair. She looks at me, then closes her eyes and aims for my cheek. Now I'm turning my head, turn and kiss her on the lips. As she leans in, I turn my face so her lips meet mine. Cowdy quickly opens her eyes and pulls back. Y you why? D don't just... I can't... You... Cowdy hits my chest, but her face is still bright red. And she avoids eye contact with me. She shifts uncomfortably and breathes out in a huff. I never knew how I could make Cowdy speechless. Cowdy is so adorable when she's like this. Hell yeah, she is. Shut up! Aw, she is! Shut up! I always knew she- Cowdy smacked Show hard on that arm. They all said something! Why am I the only one being assaulted? Because you're an idiot! The group bursts into laughter. Cowdy sits down, arms crossed, and pouty. But I know her well enough to know she is actually happy underneath that angry facade. We play a few more rounds of the King's Game, and Show never once drew the colored stick. Watching his frustration as some of us become repeated kings was an endless source of amusement. I wonder if his luck is really that bad, or if a certain blonde was rigging the game for her own amusement. When it becomes late, we say our goodbyes and head out. Alrighty man, I'll see you in the next Cowdy, um, route event. Alrighty, let's hang out with Cowdy. I wonder what Cowdy's up to. I pull out my phone and give her a call. Hello? Hey, Cowdy. Hi. Are you busy? I'm just about to head to the daycare. It's going to be an extra busy day. Extra busy? Yeah. We're understaffed since one person is on vacation and another person called in sick. Maybe I can help. Dot dot dot. Hello? If that's what you want, then I guess you can help. But don't forget it's still work. Yes, ma'am. Don't start this again. <laughs> yes. Cowdy disconnects be the call before I can finish. Rude. Oh well, I better not be late or Cowdy will be angry. I find my bike and drive to the daycare. When I drive when I arrive, Cowdy is nowhere to be found. I follow a group of adults into the building. They're either parents or staff, but either way, they get me where I need to go be. Considering there are no kids tagging along, I think it's safe to say that they're staff. We pass through one of the children's playroom and continue into an office in the back. Cowdy's there with another guy, discussing something I can't hear. She nods in, in greeting when I enter. Once everyone gets situated, the guy clears his throat. Hello everyone, I know we haven't had one of these staff meetings in a while, but it's going to be a bit busy today since Daichi is on vacation and Hibiki called in sick. Luckily, Kaori's friend has offered to help out, so we'll only be short one man instead of two. 
Everyone stares at me as he smiles in my direction. Um, hi. I'm Gat Huga. Happy to help. Glad to meet you. I'm Eito Iwasa. Since we'll have to do a little shuffling with coverage, here are everyone's roles for today. Ito checks his clipboard and goes down a list of names. Kaori watches silently, silently as Ito takes charge. Once he finished, he looks at me. Since you're from Ace, we'll have you tutoring the older kids. I nod. Kaori and I will attend to the toddlers and younger kids. Wait, Kaori won't be tutoring with me? Dude, it's not a big deal. But I want to be with Kaori. I have insecurity. She can't be with another man. Like, I want to be with my baby girl 24-7 every single day. No, man. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's not a big deal. You can meet her after. Or later in the day. A twig of, a twinge of jealousy makes my mouth taste stale. But I swallow it back down. It makes sense that, that the more seasonal staff or volunteers would take care of the younger kids. I'd be considered... I'd be c concerned if they stuck some random guy with no ch childcare experience in there instead. Although my brain seems to reason, my heart still sees red. With everyone's roles assigned, the group slowly disperses. One of the staff member members offers me- Eh, fuck. Offers to take me to the tutoring room. I thank them as I follow her into a room filled with children between 4th and 6th sixth, sixth grade. Seeing a new face, the kids kept interrupting me to ask questions about myself. They were especially curious because I didn't look very Japanese. They asked about where I was from. What, I, what was it like back home? What was it like to be a pilot? I try hard to keep their focus on their homework, but it's a lot tougher than I expected. Finally, I gave up and answered their questions. Once their questions were out of the way, they were able to focus on their homework. Although, they tried hard, most of the students had difficulty grasping the material. I could tell that they were frust frustrated, so I tried to think of different ways to exp explain the same things, which helped immensely. I understand why Kaori is so ad adamant, adamant to be here for these kids when she's, when she's exhausted. After a while, it looks like everyone is on track. Knowing that Ito and Kaori are alone together still makes me uneasy. I'll go see how Kaori is doing. It doesn't take me long to find the younger kids. All I had to do was follow the sounds of streaks and laughter. Oh, look at her. I gently pu push the door open and see Kaori surrounded by children. Both of her arms are full of kids and one even hangs on off her back. The rest hug her legs. Although Kaori weakly protests, the huge smile on her face gives away of, of her true feelings. I've never seen her this happy before. A chorus of Miss Kaori circles around circles her as children compete for her attention. Suddenly, the child on Kaori's back slips. With a sharp yelp, she grabs a strap on Kaori's clothing. Careful! The strap falls off her shoulder as she bends down so the child can land softly on a table. I got it. Ito gently places the strap back onto Kaori's shoulder. I wait in secret glee for the pending doom Ito has inflicted upon himself by touching her. But to my surprise, Kaori doesn't react. As Ito tries to take one of the kids off Kaori's hands, the child looks at Ito for a second, then buries... buries then burrows her face into Cowdy's shoulder. Cowdy laughs. I don't think she wants to leave anytime soon. Ito laughs too. I can't really blame her. If it were anyone else, Cowdy would have slapped them for touching her so it intimately. Confront Ito. Talk to Cowdy in private. Do nothing. The fuck am I gonna do with the first two? The fuck? Confront Ito. Just walk in. Like, East Little Styles just walk in like, Hey, Ito! BAM! Fucking punch him in the face. Like, no. The fuck? <laughs> Talk to Cowdy in private. Um, Cowdy. Because I'm so insecure. I just need to talk to you and, and ask you. Do you see something in Ito? Like, you're not hitting him. Like, 
like you do anyone else's who touch you like i touch you and you hit me and i'm your boyfriend it's like dude come on don't do nothing that's the best thing to do because why you gotta be jealous man you got the girl unless you know like mm, how do i say this right unless not suspecting but you more more likely you're like this girl's cheating on me but like this whole thing what happened right here is like it's nothing to be concerned about you know so don't do anything as much as it bothers me to see as much as it bothers me to see Ido's interaction with Cowdy like that I have to remain calm this isn't the type of environment where causing a scene would be appropriate 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 <laughs> appropriated <laughs> and now that i have a chance to breathe and assess the situation what happened isn't actually a big deal besides cowdy is a one woman girl i don't need to be so i don't need i needn't the fuck i needn't uh, uh, fuck i don't know i don't know thou does that thy girl as a one man girl i needn't be so insecure i take another deep breath after getting myself in order i headed back to the tutoring room another hour passes by in a blur and before long the parents trickle in to collect their children the kids whine that they want to stay longer with miss cowdy but their parents urges them to home <coughs> fuck Man, I gotta vomit. Ugh. But their parents urged to them home. After all the kids have gone, the staff wave goodbye to each other and pack up to go home. Before I go, I want to catch up with Cowdy. Cowdy finds me first. Hey you. Sorry, we didn't have much of a chance to hang out today. It's okay. I did see you come into the toddler's room earlier, but you left before I could say hi. You had your hands full. Cowdy smiles. I heard the kids talking about you to their parents. They really liked you. She takes a step closer to me and her face turns red. She goes on her tiptoes and pecks me on the cheek. I blink, surprised by her bold display of affection. Th that's your reward. You see guys, that's your reward by not taking shit too seriously, you know? It's like, little things like that shouldn't bother you. And if you do, it's like, you kind of got to focus on yourself. Like, why are you so insecure? Like, are you worried that, like, what your relationship right now is going to happen like the last one? Or, you know what I mean? It's like, you can't be so insecure. Okay. I should offer to help out more often if that's going to be my reward. Cowdy blushes deepens. Blush deepens. I'm almost ready to go. I'll see you in a few minutes. Sure. I wait for Cowdy as she packs up her things. I can't remember why I was feeling insecure in the first place. I have nothing to worry about. I couldn't ask for a better day. After I gather all of my things, I drive home. Let's go. <laughs> the fuck. Let's go to the next event. Alrighty, let us continue. We're right here at the gardens, if you remember that from the playthrough, man. Because I had to do a lot of skipping. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Luckily, we arrive right before the next scheduled tour, and we are all able to secure a spot with the group. The tour guide leads us on a gravel path and speaks non-stop about the history of the garden and each plant that we see. The history stuff is kind of cool. I wish I had the money to commission my own garden paradise, but does this guy really have to go into detail about every single plant? I survey the flowers and trees around me. Bright petals of colors sway gently in the breeze, and a few of them float towards our feet. I wonder how they keep this place so green all this time of e at this time of year. As I glance around the group, everyone seems to be focused on the greenery around us. I scan a few of the fields of flowers and I'm impressed by the size and scope of the garden. 
It seems to go on forever. While we meter along, I spot a few trees with low hanging branches, full of ripe berries, a few paces off the path. My stomach growls in response. Okay, don't judge me, but this will be kind of how I am in real life, but I would fucking eat those berries. Like, I don't know what it is. I'm still a kid. Like, if I see, like, like grapes, because outside we have, like, grapes and, like, my stepmom's make, um, planting mangoes, right? Like, grab them and just shove it in your face. And I've been like that, like, like, shoving shit in my face, so... Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy. I spurti- I spurticti- Fuck. I sir rep tiously check to make sure no one is watching. Satisfied, I sneak off the path and head straight for the trees. The plump berries are bright shade of red and my mouth waters at the thought of eating them. I pick a handful and I'm about to put them in my mouth when someone slaps them right out of my hand. Ow! I look over to see Cowdy scowling at me. What do you do that for? You can't just shove the first thing you see into your mouth! Um, yeah you can. Like, what's the problem with that? I snort as I try to hold back a retort. Cowdy does not seem amused. You have to pay attention! They might be poisonous! Why would they be poisonous, Cowdy? Come on. That makes no sense. Who plants poisonous berries? I don't even bother holding back this laugh. <laughs> Cowdy, why would a beautiful garden like this, frequent by all types of people, including children, have poisonous berries? Like seriously, who would plant poison in their own garden? Instead of, instead of answering, Cowdy points to a sign posted beneath the tree. Danger, do not eat. Oh, but that's stupid, what the fuck? Cowdy crosses her arms, but wears a satisfied smirk. They should put- Eh, fuck. They should post that sign up higher. Who's going to see, see it so close to the ground? Oh, uh, I hate that response so much. Ah, fuck. It's because at my yoga land that I work at, we have three signs. In the front of the door, um, where you go order your yogurt because we don't do um self-serving no more we serve it for you and we have it at the cash registers that n we don't take cash we only take card or mobile pay and every time people don't see that sign and when we tell them like at the register that we only take card they're like oh but but i only have cash well Sucks to be you. <laughs> like, seriously, man, we have three signs. How can you miss all of them? Children. The ones who are most likely to eat things they shouldn't. Touche. I look at Cowdy again and smile. Of course she'll be the one to notice I'm away. As much as he pretends not to care, I'm still surprised by what a big heart she has. Cowdy frowns. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're beautiful. Beautiful as the flowers in this garden, my dear. I had no idea. No idea. I have no idea. Or <laughs> I had no idea you cared so much about me. She blinks in surprise, then looks away as her cheeks turn pink. I don't. I just don't want you to die yet. Not until we've played our last match for the semester. Uh huh. My smile broadens at her response. That's a strange way to show your affection. Her blush deepens. D don't be stupid! Let me show you what affection is. Our lips lock in a passionate kiss as I scoop her into my embrace. At first, Cowdy tenses up in surprise, but then quickly melts into the kiss. She slowly pulls away and tries to catch her, s her breath. Her face is bright red, but a broad smile is on her lips. That is how you show affection. She playfully hits my arm, but laughs anyway. We spent some time together before rejoining the group. The tour was very beautiful, and I enjoyed the luxurious pace we took around the gardens. 
although I did learn a lot more than plants than I wa ever wanted to know. Alrighty, let us go to the next event. I will see you there. Let's hang out with Cowdy. Just as I'm about to dial Cowdy's number, she calls me instead. I answer. Hey. Hi. Are you busy? Not particularly. What's up? Did you want to come to the gym with me? I'm going to try a new routine and would like to have a spotter. Yeah, sure. The gym is in the rec room? Yes, thanks. No problem. See you there. I make my way to the rec room, the rec center, and quickly get changed. Once I'm done, I enter the gym. Cowdy is in her <coughs> gym uniform, and I sniffle a laugh. I thought I'd be used to it by now, but I'm not. Hey, Cowdy. She nods. Hi. Thanks for agreeing to help. No problem. I was going to get a workout anyway. So, what's this new routine you had planned? She hands me her phone and I scroll through. I've mainly been doing endurance training and would like to incorporate more mass building. Well, that sounds good. You know what I mean? Like, endurance is good, but like, you gotta get a little bit of muscle going. Like, at least a little to look kind of good, you know what I mean? Because everyone looks good with muscles, like girls and guys with a little bit of muscles. Because there's a certain point where it's like, it's not attractive at all if you're a guy or a girl like there's a certain point where you're just like <laughs> if you ever look at any bodybuilders you know like those guys it's like those guys they went beyond that point where it looks bad to make it worse <laughs> fuck man sounds good all right let's get started then she nods and we find an empty bench she begins gathering weights and adds them to the bar and keeps adding weights my jaw drops as she adds a hundred pounds to the bar. Is this petite girl for real? Cowdy lies down on the bench and stands by her head. She adjusts her grip and focuses her breathing, then lifts the bar off and begins her reps. Although Cowdy, I, although I knew Cowdy took her fitness seriously, I'm still impressed. She's attracted a few, a few more onlookers too, so I'm not, not the only one impressed. With one final exhale, he places the bar back on the bench. Alright, warm-ups are done. Wait, that was just a warm-up? Those were just warm-ups? She adds another 20 pounds to her weight and repeats her reps. After she competes her set, she slides off the bench and wipes her face with a towel. Good job. Very nice. Cowdy offers me a smile. Thanks. Okay. Your turn now. I mainly do cardio at the gym to stay fit and only occasionally do endurance training. I don't think I can bench much more than her. How do I want to play this? Beast mode. Activate 200 pounds. No, I can't even do that. 140? Mm, no, I could do like 120. But no, let's do 100 pounds and higher reps, you know what I mean? Like... It's good to be endurance too, like. So you're not like tired so easily doing like, you know what I mean? Like um a hundred. That's um how many reps I used to do in a set. I would do like a hundred, but it took me a long time to do a hundred, man. I pull off twenty pounds and slide on the and slide onto the bench. Cowdy spots me as I begin my reps. After three sets, I finish. I didn't know you do endurance training, too. Well, you gotta keep your figure, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not too interested in becoming a beefcake. I just want to survive the streets of East Los. Cowdy grins, clearly amused. We run through the rest of her routine, one exercise after another. She times her rest periods down to the second and diligently follows the mantra of one more rep. I follow her routine as well. I definitely it's definitely more challenging than the typical stuff I do at the gym. Once we complete her list, Cowdy turns to me. Do you have any specific exercises you wanna do? I shake my head. That was a solid workout. Cowdy nods. She gathers the weights 
and places them back where he found them, then wipes down the equipment. Come on. I follow Cowdy towards the mats. Um, what are we doing now? Stretching. Oh. Dude, I hate stretches. Like, I don't really do them, but they're, like, really... I don't want to say important. Like, I don't get, like, doing stretches before workouts, but after workouts, it helps you not be that much sore. Like, it's really good. So do stretches afterwards, because you're going to be hurting the next day. <laughs> oh? You don't want to be stiff, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Caddy loosens up and shakes out her limbs, then begins with basic stretches, and I follow Sue. As she interlaces her arms behind her, she glances over at me. Actually, do you think you can help me stretch? I can help you, too. Um... Here. Pull on my arms. I move behind her and gently pull her arms back. Is this good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't smile. Don't, don't do that. Mm-hmm. As I quickly hold, hold her in position, I look up at the mirror in front of us and Cowdy straightens, straightens at, and straighten at Cowdy's, fuck. <laughs> I hold her position and I look up in the mirror in front of us and straight at Cowdy's chest. I quickly look away with her arms pulled back like that, it, with her arms pulled back like that, her chest, her chest, ah, fuck, I don't know why I can't read. <laughs> With her arms, with her arms pulled back, like that it, like that leaves her chest wide open. Thankfully, her eyes are closed, so she can't focus. So she can focus on her breathing. Next stretch. Cody dr arms drop. She gets down on the mat and lies down on her stomach. Hold me under the knee and help me lift my leg up. I have never been more thankful to the person who created Japanese gym uniforms. I admired the perfect roundness of her, of her what? Der, der, fuck, is that ass? Come on, derrier, and the slight jiggle as she lifts her leg. Hey, did you hear me? Um, oh, right. I kneel down beside her and do as she asks, gently holding her leg up. Wait, I need support for my lower back. Can you put your hand there? You don't have to ask me twice. I rest my hand on her lower back, right above the curve of her butt, and lift again. Uh. Too much? Shakes her head. No, a little more. As I lift her leg high, her uniform bot bottom rides up, revealing firm pl por 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 fuck, porcelain flesh. Dumb? <laughs> I avert my gaze as my heart beats faster. Do I tell her or pretend I don't see this? Okay, your turn. Uh, nope. I let out the breath I didn't realize I was holding as Cowdy untangles herself from her position. Um, I'm good. We can continue with your stretches. She shrugs, then lies down on her back and lifts one leg. Can you push my leg forward? I hover over and hold her up by her calf to gently apply pressure. No, you have to be lower. I need your support for my leg. Lower where? Kneel down and push that way. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, I'm, I'm imagining dirty st shit right now. I'm sorry. I do as she asks, and she holds her leg straight against my shoulder. More! I lean in, using my body to help her leg straight. Still more? No, help her keep her leg straight. Still more? Scooting even closer to her, I gently lean in a little more. The back of my neck tingles and I look around the room at the myriad of eyes on me. After glancing in the mirror, I quickly break away from her. From that angle, it looks like I'm... My face reddens. Cowdy bolts straight up and frowns. Why'd you stop? Um... Innocent bliss. Why did I stop? Let's keep going. Fuck these guys with their eyes. No, I'll be too embarrassed. Explain why. I think that's enough stretching for now. Cowdy looks curiously at me. What's going on? Well, it's a little uncomfortable. No, the pressure was okay. 
I've been working on my flexibility, so a little burn is good. No, I mean for me. Huh? You seriously don't see it? See what? Alright, go back. We get into the same position, and I, and I gesture towards the mirror. What does that look like to you? She looks blankly at the mirror, then her eyes grow wide as her face turns bright red. She scoots away from me. Uh, I think that's enough stretching for today. We're right. We put the mats away and head towards the locker rooms. Right before we split to get changed, she grabs my hand and looks down. Thanks for helping me today. You did really well. I'm glad you asked me to join- oh, Yeah, I'm glad you asked me to join you. We should do this again. Definitely, man. I mean, ma'am. She hesitates. Then her cheeks turn pink as quickly as she quickly kisses me on the lips. I'll see you in a few minutes. Before I can answer, she disappears into the woman's locker rooms. A smile spreads across my face as I enter the men's locker room. We definitely have to do this again soon. I quickly get changed, then meet Cowdy out front. So, there was something I wanted to ask you. What's up? Anime Con is this weekend, and I was thinking maybe we could go together. Yes. But only if you want to. I grin. Sure, that sounds like fun. Really? Okay. Cowdy smiles. She seems genuinely excited for it. I better get back to studying. I nod. See you later. She waves, a small smile still on her lips as we part ways. Alright, I'm gonna end it there. I am... Uh, hot. I'm sweating. And I wanna do some kush after. So... If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification to see whenever I post a silly video, and leave a comment. Alrighty, I'll see you later. Alrighty, bye bye.